Hey guys, and welcome to episode 31 of the Revive Yourself podcast. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Have you got a health issue that just won't go away no matter what you try? Then welcome to the Revive Yourself podcast, where we reveal the secrets to long-lasting health by getting to the root cause of problems that no one else is talking about. So you can have more energy, clear skin, healthier hair, a leaner physique, more confidence, and most importantly, do the things you love and live the life you deserve. Here's your host, Ryan Martin. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 31. Um, just want to say, been getting some great feedback on the episodes as always. Last week's episode with Mark Lester, people are loving that and asking me where to find, or actually where to find, or they've been buying his stuff, which is great. Um, so really good feedback, guys. Thank you. Keep it coming. Also, getting some great feedback as, as well, always, about the free four-day Revive Yourself um, mini course, the Gut Revival mini course. And if you want to go on that, head on over to www.reviveyourself.co. Some exciting stuff coming up, guys, as well as um, going to be getting some really good health bundles for you on my site that you'll be able to buy. Putting together some different bundles for skin, for energy, for digestive health, for anti parasitic, um, for anti parasitic um, values, ones that, that's going to be antiviral. Um, as well so gonna, I'm going to put out as well and also a healthy snack bundle because I think that's really important as well when people want to on a Sunday maybe relax and have a healthy snack it's really important so I'm putting together a few bundles for you on my site they'll be going up and they'll be going through uh, a site that I really recommend um, so yeah that's coming out as well guys which is going to be great I want to say this 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 um, episode is sponsored by www.reviveyourself.co so if you want to head over there and have a look at all the articles and all different courses and things we offer you by all means, go ahead. Um, but today's episode is with Ian Davies of the Injury Clinic in Berkshire. So we really want to get Ian on because he comes from, um, he's a part of the fitness world, but he comes from a different perspective. He comes from getting people, well, rejuvenating them if they've already been injured, rehabbing them, but also doing a lot of stuff that's preventative. But people that generally go to the gym, they get in better shape and they can get under the bar and there's a lot of different gyms out there that, People will go and they might look good, but then they get injured later on down the line because their because their structural alignment's wrong, um, because their their movement patterns are wrong, because they've got underactive and overactive muscles uh, in their structure. So Ian deals with a lot of that, and we dive into a lot of these issues with him. We go into different, uh, we go into yoga, we go into stretching, we go into things that he does, like his structural assessment, um, etc. And we, we talk about a lot of things. And um, Ian's a really good guy, someone I know personally for the last couple of years now. Um, and anyone around the Berkshire uh, area, I definitely think you should get in touch with him if you're looking to improve any sort of performance, etc. And also he's working. On online stuff so even if you're not then you'll be able to get in touch with him there so without further ado here's the interview with Ian, with Ian. so here's the interview with Ian if I can talk correctly and guys I'll see you on the other side hey guys and welcome to episode 31 of the Revive Yourself podcast today we are with a very special guest so I've known for about well, 18 months to a couple of years now uh, and it's Ian Davis from the Injury Clinic in Berkshire now Ian specialises in obviously as you can tell by the name of name of his um his clinic in injury. Um, how are you going today, Ian? You okay? Yeah, good, thanks, buddy. I'm good. You well? Yeah, very well, mate. Um, so, Ian, mate, just to let everyone everyone know, um, obviously, we, we talk to a lot of people on the show dealing with nutrition, a lot of different health, health people, conditioning coaches, etc. Um, what got you into, into injury prevention and dealing with people coming back from all, all sorts of different injuries? Uh, a bit of a long story. Uh, so, I started off... Um, wanted to become a personal trainer purely because uh, I was into football and I'd done quite well with football um, was getting uh, noticed by pro teams I actually had a trial with Fulham's first team um, and then I didn't get accepted into the team basically I wasn't big enough I wasn't strong enough and uh, I need to know how to get big and strong and uh, so I wanted to learn how to train myself and then uh, yeah it just seemed a, a good way of earning a living as well at the same time so I started down the personal training route uh, and then uh, as I started getting more clients we were, we were doing training and would be basic exercises that I'd be doing with people but some people would be in pain from it and some wouldn't and I couldn't understand why that was and I, I wanted to know um, and so I met a guy called Anthony Fletcher or uh, those uh, that know him uh, in the industry know him as Fletch uh, and he um, basically answered all my questions uh, and suggested I go on this uh, biomechanics uh, coaching 
course and uh, that's kind of where it all started really that awesome so really it was like to, as, as always like to scratch your own sort of itch yeah yeah absolutely uh, yeah and um and so when you went on this course what did what what was your learning that was different from the other PT courses that you've been on? Like what what was what were the standout things that you were like right okay now I can now I can see why people are getting so many injuries. Uh, so we started off with um, uh, the screening process, which is a screening process I still use uh, today. Um, we're essentially screening uh, for muscle spasm, any joint mobility issues, uh, and uh, any nerve tension. Um, and this goes right throughout the body: the key pillars are shoulder, spine, pelvis, knees, and feet. Uh, so we do a full body screening and we're just basically figuring out what is and isn't working. Um, and the, I suppose the key thing we learned was cause and effect. So where you feel the site of pain isn't necessarily the main cause for the problem. Uh, so it's just knowing where to look. Um, I'll give you a, a really common example we find is quite often people get um, some back pain if they're doing any kind of lifting. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they, they're blaming their back. Oh, I've got a weak lower back. Uh, when actually if, if you free up the the hips a lot more um, then the back pain actually goes away so it's understanding that cause and effect really right yeah that that's really common in lots of people right there so where where the where the pain actually um, manifests a lot mm-hmm. of the time isn't actually the area that's the underlying root cause of the problem um, so it's that this this screen process allows you to, to understand or to get into uh, the root cause of what's going on yeah absolutely yeah and that, that's the key I mean so that's what we deal with a lot of when it comes to nutrition. There's lots of things that are given to mass symptoms and mass problems, but then we get to the root cause, and without getting to the root cause, you just those symptoms are always going to come back. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you must have had lots of clients that have probably been working on on themselves for years, but never been able to get to the root of that problem. Yeah, absolutely. The amount of people that um, that will come in and say, "Oh, yeah, I've got uh, I've got a sore knee, so let's uh, avoid working uh, our legs today," and you're like, "Well, hold on a sec. That's surely that's what we should be spending most of our time on." Um, so let's figure out why your knees are sore uh, and then actually get you using your legs properly. Um, and that's, I suppose, where we differ most is we, we won't avoid the problem or even try and mask it by suggesting you take painkillers and anything like that. We want to figure out what's causing that and then let's work on that first and foremost and then we can move you into a more progressive program from there. Yeah, I mean, obviously it happens a lot. You go to, you have a back pain or something, people say, well, just rest it, don't don't use that. I'll get lots of people come in. they got to yeah. say you just need to rest it, but... That's as always. Say it's just, it's amazing. It's never going to get the the area stronger. You're never going to actually understand what's been going on. So yeah, I yeah. completely get that. So I mean, that comes down to when people say, um, oh, like functional training. In fact, yeah, we're, we're going to that. And we're going to the the general issues you see a lot. Um, but when people say, oh, I want to I want to do functional training or or be functional. What does that mean to you? I mean, because a lot of people, this means being able to do certain exercises, but being fully functional, what does that mean to you? Uh, essentially, moving pain-free and, and the way you want to move. Uh, I, I'd still be quite um, kind of broad with it. It's very much a case of um, being able to do the movement you're required to do um, uh, pain-free uh, and effectively. It's, it's as simple as that, but quite often people aren't. Um, and if you look in gyms where people kind of say, oh, like, look at functional training, it kind of means like uh, either a multi, multi-plane movements or using a brand new bit of kit like these, um, uh, I think Vipers that uh, Virgin Active have added, like they're just rubber tubes and they, they call that functional training. And it's like, well, functional is fit for purpose. That's essentially what functional training is. Yeah. So you know, they, those rubber tubes are helpful if that's kind of essential to how you're going to move in whatever it is you're training for. Um, if you're just doing it to keep fit, then it's not functional training. It's just keep fit training. Yeah, uh, and lots of people, right? When they're when they're doing these sort of training, um, these by this functional training, lots of them you you probably seen it. And it's like saying it might well you it might not. You might have just got to the point where you're like, well, that's life. Where you see people doing functional training or exercises that are just far too complex for them. They can't complete their movement, and and it just makes things worse for any injuries they got. It just exaggerates them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, with um with exercise uh we um so we learned about um uh, in some of my training we've done before we learned about uh, like an exercise continuum so uh again we'll we we'll, we'll look at a squat for example so um you kind of got um hip knee and ankle uh, movement there so there's, there's three joints that you're really kind of looking at and get moving effectively there now if you've got a problem with one of those joints you need to get that joint moving first and foremost before you then start looking at combining it with other joints 
So you need to scale it right back to, let's say it's the, the knees that aren't moving so well, for example. You just scale it right back and make sure, right, let's get the knees working properly. And then can we now um, uh, integrate that into a, a more compound movement like a squat? If we can, great, let's start working on that. If not, why not? What do we need to do next before we then move it into a squat? I mean, yeah, and it, I mean, that's that's something that most people, it's because it takes, because most people, see what you're saying there, because you're like an actual injury clinic, so people come to you and they've actually got injuries, but a lot of people go to the gym because they just want to look better, right? Um, and so a lot of this goes uh, by the wayside, people don't actually spend time on it, and then you either get people that have gone there to look better, but then they get injured and then go backwards because they have to spend time out trying to get over these uh, over the injuries they've come to. So, I mean, this really should be um, the basis for for any sort of program, right? To work on people's weaknesses because otherwise they're just going to come up later on down down the line. And you're going to make them worse. Yeah, absolutely. And you can get a really effective program that's challenging enough um, that um, kind of works on these weaknesses as well. You, you just need to spend um, like. Averaging, we see a couple of weeks where we just spend uh, spend time working on these areas, getting people moving uh, effectively. And, and quite often, it's just figuring out what isn't moving. So let's encourage that to move more. Um, a combination of manipulation and stretching, um, and then it's then integrating that into some basic isolated strength work initially, and then we move that into more integrated movements such as yeah, uh, compound movements like squats, lunges, deadlifts, etc. Um, you know, it doesn't take that long to move people from that basic work right into the the integrated work and then you're just looking at um like you um like a, what you probably consider as a standard um personal training is teaching people how to uh, lift properly and, and work hard enough to achieve their goals it, it's just stepping back that little bit first to to make sure everything's working the way it should do and it, it don't take that long no it's no. just but it's, it's, it's the thing, and I see most, you see lots of people doing deadlift, squats, etc., and they're just all over the place. Their body is completely, and you're just seeing things that are, you just know that uh, sooner or later, um, the heavier they go, the more intense they go with their workout, etc. Something, something's going to give. Um, so, for everyone out there, it's going through this and getting these sort of screening done is, is really essential because generally, I mean, if I said to you, the people that, that come and see you, they put, have, have a lot of them, unless they've gone into like a car crash recently or something, have a lot of them had their pain for a while? I mean, do they think it's normal for them to have the pain? They almost made it sort of like a, well, yeah, this is just what I've got. I've just got back pain or I've just got knee pain. Yeah, people just put it down to old age. Um, and it's like, well, you know, I had um, a 16-year-old girl that came in who um, had back pain that you'd probably associate with a 40-year-old. It's got nothing to do with age. It's just very much in terms of how they're moving um, and how their body's stacked up. And again, when you can get things working uh, together, so um, you know, joints and, and muscles are supported by other joints and muscles. Like everything needs to work together. The more you can make your compound exercises like that, where you feel like everything's doing a job, the safer and the more effective your lift's going to be. If you feel like something's taken over more. So again, commonly people will think um, a squat is for your thighs um, or a deadlift is for your back and it's absolute rubbish like you know, your thighs will work when you're squatting but it's not the only thing working same with your deadlift like your, your back's going to support your spine but it's not the only thing that's working in fact the lift should be coming from your legs and not from your back so it's, it's I think a lot of it comes down to education understanding well, why are you doing that exercise what you're trying to achieve from it and quite often people don't know that and I think if we can coach people um, as to what they're looking for initially that's going to help um with their exercise going forward yeah 100%. yeah just because i'm doing a chest press and my chest is automatically going to work and it's like that's not the case how many people do you see you've got massive arms and no chest just because they think they're doing a chest press like it's just and, the, and their forms out all over the place so yeah it's very much it's about how you do the exercise what do you feel working if we got that right right now let's progress the exercise Yep, and as 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 I say, a lot of people on this, it's, it's, a, it's a quote I use quite a lot because it's so. For me, it's it's really uh, it, it tells a story in its own. When people say, "Well, a lot of people probably think, well, I've always had this,' or that's normal. Everyone's got some sort of injury or some sort of niggle. Uh, it, that's normal." I said, no, "No, it's not normal. It's common." Yeah, um, and that's the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. People think it's common. So, if, if uh, for you, I mean, we're, we're going to what do you? What's the most common injury people come with you from? I mean, I mean, does it? 
Um, is it because they've been lifting boxes? Is it sitting, or is it because they've been running awkwardly, or do you get all of the above? I mean, if someone said to you, what's the most common thing that you see, or the thing that's wrong? What would it be? Uh, yeah, like it's probably a combination of knee or back pain, um, but it all comes down to people um, being sat down for too long. Like we we're working uh, like long hours behind desks, behind cars, um, stressful jobs, blah blah blah. Like, uh, and as a result. Um, we just kind of the, the combination of, of stress and, and being less active is, is causing these issues. And then we try and think, oh, I need to do something about it. I'm going to go and go out for a run or I'm going to start playing football again and do something that is like very complex compared to just sitting on your ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like they just they just go from naught to 60 far too quickly. Mm-hmm. And again, if you just understand that, you know, muscles are still active when you're sat down, uh, not necessarily the ones that you want. But you know, um, you know, certain areas are going to tighten up, especially hips. They're the main thing. They're going to tighten up, and that's going to have a knock-on effect to either your knees or your back, depending on how you're loaded. Um, and they, yeah, like I mean, obviously, if you if I screen someone, I can get a much better idea of how I can help them. But as a generic bit of advice, I would say, free your hips up. Like the, the more time you can spend on mobilising your hips, uh, the less problems you're going to have when you start exercising. Right. I mean, it's something that. Um it's like this is one of the things where we talked a little bit about it uh, a few weeks ago with Derek Woodski. Uh, we're talking about CrossFit, um, just because people generally go in there and they're just beasted from day dot, uh, and then they start doing highly complex lifts. And and I mentioned I don't mind people doing those those things, but I'd rather them start to learn to juggle with oranges before knives, right? So, I mean, do you, do you see a lot of people who have gone into gyms and have tried complex movements and then they just come unstuck? Yeah, as it, funny enough, you mentioned. A CrossFit because I had a guy um, who was a member of a CrossFit gym um, and he's a, he's a big strong lad um, but the problem with him being a big strong lad is if he's got weaker areas because the amount of force he can generate he's going to exacerbate them weaker areas a lot easier and he was forever injuring himself um, whether it be his knee that would be sore or his hip that would be sore or his back would go or shoulder whatever like he's just collecting injuries yeah. um, uh, and it, it, again it came back to the same stuff we just went back to basics got him moving properly, got him, uh, got those areas that weren't working, got them working again. Um, uh, and then we, we started them really basic um, and then developed them into some more of the movements that you do in CrossFit. And then he went back to CrossFit. Um, well, he had a he had a trek to, um, I think it was base camp, um, Everest base camp um, in between that. But um, we got him to base camp and, and he was fine there. And then he, um, he ended up going back to CrossFit in the end. And it, it took us... Um, probably about four months, five months to get him there. Right. Um, but yeah, he, and he's he's still doing it. He's fine. He's um, back to CrossFit again. So there's nothing wrong with CrossFit, but it is uh, it's quite a jump, especially if you're brand new to it. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I think that's why people get a lot of injuries from those sorts of things is they're just not ready for that level of exercise. But I would never, I'd never say like this is too dangerous or that's too dangerous. It's just understanding where you are. Um, I suppose in your kind of uh, exercise continuum what it is that you need to do uh, to get you to the place that you want to get to um, I, I'll never say anything's either too much or, or too little it's just uh, that's very much down to the individual and where they want to get to that's all yeah and, that, and that's the thing right it's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the point we always say there's no it's just in, in, it's nothing there's no um, wrong uh, exercise it's just in, in, incorrectly prescribed things for the incorrect yeah. person at the wrong time and because and just say there's the, the some of the it's not just CrossFit. I mean, if someone has, has got a, a bad running gait, right, and they go and try and do a marathon, and they go and run on concrete for 26 miles, for example, that's not going to be great for them. It's going to cause something down the line. So like dripping water eventually eats through stone, right, and you're going to probably pick up an injury down the line. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, we we see that quite a lot of people um, come in and want to run, uh, want to run marathons, and we'll. Um, we'll get them kind of halfway through that journey where they realise that actually the amount of training they're doing, uh, they're starting to break down, and that could be something to do with uh, like nutrition, not getting uh, enough uh, the right nutrients on board, uh, or even enough calories on board. That's quite a common one. People want to run marathons and try and lose weight at the same time, and you're like, well, you need to load up their, their calories, and they're kind of eating so few calories for the amount of work they're doing. It's like no wonder your body's breaking down. So that's one issue. Another one is um, yeah gate like people sat down all day long and then go out for a long run like getting your hips are tight being stuck in a flex position for 
a long period of time, you're going to find it very difficult to extend your hit whilst you're running. Mm-hmm. So well, that's actually something I was going to go into. I mean, the thing with the marathons, I always say to people, "What why are you doing it? a lot of them charity?" Or most they say that, but it's generally to lose weight and give themselves up. And you know what? Power to them. Anything to get them out out and exercising, but. I always say to them, next time you, you you go and watch the marathon, have a look at the end of the race and see how many people have got physiques you'd actually like to have. Because <laughs> otherwise it's better to spend your time doing all sorts of all-round exercises, eating well and get there and, and pay someone else to run it. Because 26 miles for me on that concrete floor is uh, so a lot of wear and tear on your body, right? especially for a lot of people who have literally been doing, have been pretty sed- uh, sedentary for like quite, a long, quite a while. Um, it's just like a very long way to run on a very hard ground um, and people do generally grit their teeth and get through it but that's not how exercise should be right exercise should be fun and and not well not always easy but but uh, not to the point of pain it shouldn't be painful in that terms of uh, muscles and stuff you're gonna get you're gonna get tired and it's gonna be challenging but not painful you know what i mean yeah i mean we've, we've got a guy as well into his running like if that's something that you love to do and, uh, and you love the challenge of running long distances, so we got a guy, uh, he just attempted a 100-mile race. He got uh, 70 miles in and um, and then realised that he wasn't going to make it, so he stopped after 70 miles. But uh, a few months before that, he actually entered a 100k race, about 60 miles, uh, and he won it in like nine hours. Um, and he and it got back. And apart from having tired legs for the next few days, um, he didn't have a single blister. Um, his body was in good shape, but he's been working on his Run and he's a running coach as well, so right. you know that. But he's been working on his running for easily twenty years. Right. You know, it's not something that just happens overnight. And you know, running's not bad for you. Running badly is bad for you. Yeah. Uh, and that's like the new, it's like you see people in the New Year's Eve, the New Year's Eve, so the New Year's Day sort of resolutions come out, and you see people hitting the pavements. And I'm always like a little bit like, look, I'm, I'm so happy they're out doing stuff. In one hand, I'm like, that's brilliant. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm like, ah. Oh. It, it, yeah. it, it could just I don't want people to get injured so it's just like there's a lot of, uh, of ways or better ways to go about starting this you know yeah I think I think that's the thing if, if you enjoy running then learn how to run properly and, and go and do it if you're uh, if you just want to lose a bit of weight uh, and you want to get fit and you're going out running yeah I mean there are definitely other alternatives you can you can look at like I would certainly start if you're certainly if you're new to exercise look at your lower impact options first and build up to higher impact if that is something that you want to go into later on. But jumping straight from the couch to high impact probably ain't the smartest move you'll ever make. Yeah. And it's also, even I mean, this is the thing, it's even if you go and run on grass, for example, you see like sprinters, so like season sprinters, they won't they won't go straight on the hard indoor track or on the outdoor track. They're, they spend time in their trainers uh, on the grass, and then, they're, and then they're moving to like the soft bits of the track, and then they're going to the hard bit of the track because they know it's all accumulation, right? Their body's not ready for it, otherwise, they will put a muscle or they will strain a ligament or do, do something, you know. Um, so even, this is not just for people, this is like, this is, comes from the top, top people doing this sort of stuff. Um, it, it's, um, unfortunately, people just go out and run, they don't know much about it. That's why I just want to get it out there. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with running and I want people to go and exercise yeah. much more than I want them to sit on the couch. But I just want them not to go and do it and then get injured and be like, oh, now I'm out for four months and now I don't yeah. know what to do, you know. Absolutely. It's definitely worth kind of taking that time to, understand how you're moving first and foremost and then what can you do to improve your movement like if it is running how can i run safely and effectively if it's lifting again lifting is not bad for you but lifting badly is bad for you so it's understanding how can i lift safely and effectively or you know whatever you decide to do if it's going to play sport what movements do i need to do to be able to go back and, and play sport again um you know because you've been sat on your ass for like five ten years um because work or whatever situation hasn't allowed you to exercise, uh, you, you almost need to treat it as, as though you're starting again from scratch and then just build up gradually and then you'll be able to move pain-free. And it won't take you as long as you think, but you just got to do that foundation work first. No, mate, I 100% agree. And you mentioned now, I was going to mention this, um, I mean, you've got cabbies, you've got people in offices all day who sit all day and um, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, most people, unless they're labouring, they're, they're quiet. They're sitting all day, and even now you've got people who have got standing desks. That's probably a standing. They're probably standing too much. I mean, you need to find the right balance, right? Because standing too much is better for you. Sitting down too much is better for you. For people that are sitting down too much, um, what's the most common problem, and what, and what, and what have they got to do, or what should they be doing just to alleviate that? Is that hips again? Yeah. So all their weight's going through their hips. I, um, especially uh, quite often they'll be um, 
sitting on seats that are too low for them. So all their weight would be going through their hips. Their legs are doing nothing at all. Um, and then when it comes to standing up and moving around again, they're so used to loading through their hips. That's what they carry on doing. Um, what they need to do is just get used to loading through their legs again. Like the, the first bit of advice I'd give someone would be to get yourself a higher seat. Uh, I mean, if you listen to this now, just, um, just try it. You'd probably be sat on a sofa or something like that. Go and sit with your butt on the um, on the edge of kind of like a window seal or something like that, or the edge of a table where you're a lot higher up. And you'll notice it's very difficult for you to put your weight through your hips. You'll end up having more weight through your feet. So if you can get yourself a higher chair, that will certainly help out. But ultimately, we're designed to move. So, um, you know, whether you're stood at a desk, sat down um, at a desk or behind a car or whatever, like if you're not moving, it's going to be a problem. So get up and move around. Try and be as active as you can. Stretch muscles that feel tight, work muscles that feel weak, uh, and that'll be the the best thing you can do. I mean, is there is there like a stretch you've got for the hips, or is it literally just making sure you've got weight going through them? Uh, I mean, first of all, is the weight going through the legs? It's the key bit. Right. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely stretch your your hips. Um, there are a lot of kind of different glute stretches that are, that will be helpful. Um, uh, lots of different hip flexor stretches that will be helpful. Whichever you're looking to do, uh, same with hamstring stretches, thigh stretches, all of those. Whatever you're looking to do, you want to make sure that you're um, engaging. Uh, this is where it kind of gets a bit complicated. So, um, if you look at uh, like a, a hamstring muscle, for example, um, it will act as a, um, a hip extensor and a knee flexor. Um, and then the opposite, if you if you look at your thigh muscle, specifically your rectum, so it's a knee extensor and a hip flexor. It's the flexors that end up getting tight, so you want to try and stretch the flexor and use the extensor. So if I give you an example of that, so if you imagine that you've um, got one knee on the floor and one foot in front of you, kind of like a lunge position, but you're resting the knee on the floor. Yep. So we're going to be stretching that back leg. So if you push your foot into the floor or the back leg, yeah, and then clench your butt and push your hips through, You'll be engaging the bottom part of your thigh, which is going to allow you to stretch the top part of your thigh, and that'll be the bit that needs stretching. Okay. If you just pull your heel towards your bum, like most people do, you're just going to be stretching around by your knee, and you're not actually going to be affecting right, I got you. the tight area so much. So that's kind of um, an example, and it's just doing the same with the hamstring. So if you lay on your back, hold the back of your leg, um, push your leg into your hand so you feel your butt working, and then try and straighten your knee. So if you try and straighten your knee, the, the lower part of the thigh will start to work and what you feel is the, um, uh, the knee flexor, so the lower part of your hamstring will actually start to stretch. Um, and then as, as that stretch progresses, the stretch will ease off and then the extents of the thigh muscle will start to work more and more. Um, I've got videos I can send over to you if you want to back them up with mate, but yeah, yeah, describing it, that's probably the best I can do. No, that's fine. No, it's all right. I think everyone understands what we're going on about there. Yeah, it's when people just, just generally stretch and just leave it, whereas you're talking about actually having some resistance there to actually make sure that the muscles are, are working rather than just pulling them. You're, you're making, you're almost giving it, um, it's like you're, you're stretching the muscle whilst, put, whilst using resistance to actually lengthen and stretch and make sure yeah. it's working. Um, Absolutely. So like the mu muscles have, uh, apart from your tongue, muscles will have at least two attachments. So uh, if you imagine you've got an elastic band and you pull an elastic band apart, you can expect that elastic band to stretch evenly throughout, right? Mm -hmm. And in theory, that's what should happen. Um, and it's nice if that does happen. But the reality is um, one area or kind of one attachment will be too tight and then up by the other area, it will be too weak. Now, if you try and stretch that, the tight area is going to stay tight and the weak area is going to end up stretching. And that's where these injuries come from. Right. people will pull their hamstrings higher up in the hamstring mid to upper hamstring they won't pull it closer to their knee very rarely will that happen and that's because that area is the weakest yeah absolutely right. and same with, with quad muscles they tend to pull it kind of mid to lower quads okay not up by their hips right okay and so for people I'm going to get in, I want to get into into that as well for two things actually when you, you stretch and you feel muscles shaking, it's shaking. You know, do you know what I mean? Well, you might yeah. have had it, people stretch it for a little bit of an What causes that? So it's a Golgi organ tendon. Basically, it's a way your body says, um, it's, it's a kind of message from your, um, uh, from your brain, uh, well, to your brain, sorry, and then back down again saying, I'm not sure about this. So it basically puts on the brakes, if you like. Right. Um, and then you're, you've got one message saying stretch and another message saying, I don't contract. Um, so that message is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that's where the shaking comes from. Right. 
Is it the dangerous? What, um, you, listen to it. So what you want to do is you want to kind of find that point, but don't force past it. Right. So you get to that point, um, and then what should happen is that should start to ease off. Your body then starts to recognize, actually, I can go a bit further. And then you can go further, you find that point again. Right. It's just a bit of a, uh, like a, a safety catch, if you like. Mm-hmm. Cool, yeah. Um, and the other, other thing I was, I was going to... Well, well, the thing, as you mentioned a little bit, we'll go quickly. You mentioned um, people who are, who are sitting down too much, it's, it's their hips. People that are standing a lot, what would, what would be their main concern? They lie back. Yeah, it could be a combination that like people can sink sideways into their hips. That's quite a common one, right. especially for uh, people that have had children. So they tend to carry their kid on their hips. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, yeah, the hips sink sideways so they can get hip issues. But yeah, people can also sink into their lower back. That's a really common one as well. Right. Um, but it can also manifest up into their shoulders as well. So it does. That, that's a very difficult one to answer because it will be different to each individual. Right, and that, and that's posture. That's postural. Um, yeah, it right. comes down to posture. So yeah, they're just uh, not loading properly through their body. They're not again getting their legs to do enough work. Therefore, their core is not involved um, equally, and then as a result, they end up sinking too much into one area, whether it's back or hips or whatever. Okay. And this was, I was going to say quite often people get shoulder injuries because let's say they shift their hips out sideways for example that's then going to cause the opposite shoulder to drop down so then they either need to compensate and lift that shoulder up therefore it overworks or actually if it stays dropped and they start overworking it it's unsupported it's unsupported so then it starts overworking doing some really basic tasks like lifting a cup to your mouth to drink a cup of tea right i mean so carry on and carry on i was just going to say so um you know making sure that you've got kind of those foundations uh are really important like uh if you were to, uh, let's use a pyramid for example, right? If you put a pyramid flat on its base, uh, it's quite difficult to knock over and push over. Mm-hmm. If you put a pyramid on its tip, it falls over straight away because mm-hmm. the foundations are very weak compared to the to what's going on above. Right, I've got yeah. And this, I mean, this must be quite common as well when you see people coming back from injuries, etc., where they've maybe injured one leg and they come back and then they do the other leg because they've been overcompensating by resting on the other ligament. Is that common? Yeah, yeah so uh, that, if we take an ACL injury, for example, so people coming back from ACL injuries, um, uh, and because they, well, it's, it's starting to change now, but uh, commonly what they do is they take a bit of your hamstring and use that as your ACL. So now you're, you've weakened the hamstring, and it's very common for people to get hamstring injuries. Um that's kind of one part of the reason. The other part is because they're sat down there, they're laid up and they're resting. They use the other leg a lot. And then when they go to use this leg, uh, again, because they haven't been using um, the leg so much, they've been loading through it, uh, the hips become a lot weaker. So hamstrings start taking over and then they overwork and that's when they start to either go into spasm or, or tear just because they've been overworking. Right. Uh, yeah, if you're looking at the standing leg, again, they'll shift their hips over too far so they're not loading properly through their leg. Um, and yeah, they can get injuries from that. But and again, that can manifest itself into uh, a knee issue, a muscle issue, a hip issue, back issue. It's, it just well, depends on yeah. how they load. I mean, being an Arsenal fan, I know people go away and get injured, and they come back, and the, the three to six, the three to six weeks turns into eight months because they come back and they just get another injury, another injury, another injury. Um, and yeah. it just seems. I mean, in my opinion, obviously they're not doing a lot, a lot of things right. They're not doing a lot of the exercises right they're probably out of alignment and their, their diet's going to be terrible in my opinion but it seems that they don't seem to get to the root cause of these issues and it, and, and that's the problem and yeah I mean funny you mention um, our football there because um, like football's my sport that's um, something I've always been interested in um, and when you look at the, the conditioning um, uh, of like footballers I still think football's uh, a bit behind um, I was looking at um, a circuit training session that was going on um, and the sorts of exercises they're getting them doing is just not relevant to football. The weights weren't um, effective enough. It's like it, it was just a bit kind of uh, behind the times, probably the right way to describe it. It was, um, and, and even in semi-professional football, like you've got um, managers that will just get you to, to run laps around pitches or, um, uh, or yeah, just kind of, like beat you up in kind of circuit training it's like none of that is relevant to to the sport yeah um, 
So, yeah, it's hard. It's, I mean, 90 minutes of football pitch. Uh, I know I haven't played both rugby and, and football. Rugby's tough yeah. the collisions and for, resting for the ball, but the ball's out of play quite a lot in football. The ball's in play the whole time, running, jumping, moving, running quickly. 90 minutes of football is a hard, hard graph, especially if you're playing in, yeah, in a, as a midfielder or, or striker, run up and down, uh, wing backs. You know, the centre backs may get a little bit less, less uh, up and down the pitch, but it's, it's a hard 90 minutes. It's not easy. Yeah, I think this comes down to um, uh, like understanding the game like as well and understanding your position. So it's knowing when you can rest and, and you can't rest like for example, for a midfielder, knowing when to join your, your teammates going forward and knowing when to sit back and let someone else go forward. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you're playing out wide, uh, and you're, uh, say you're a fullback, can your winger cover for you if you overlap him? Or can your centre-half come around? Can your midfielder tuck in? Those sorts of things. And that comes down to uh, like the manager and the, the team kind of organising for those eventualities. Like, you know, if, if you're... Uh, got a, quite a demanding um, uh, kind of, I suppose, game uh, as a manager. Uh, you have to attribute for like your players getting tired. Like it's it's going to happen. Ninety minutes is a long time to run hard. Yeah, it that's is, yeah. Deep, and that's before you take in the uh, the physical side of the game. So you know, how can we compensate that? How can we um, kind of get a, a centre half to cover or a midfielder to cover, or however they want to do it? But they need to um, kind of uh, learn to deal with that. So a lot of it. You see, you hear, hear about people saying, "Oh, this player's experience; he knows he's got that know-how." And like, I suppose the way I understand that, um, certainly from where I'm playing, is they know what um, yeah, they know what to do. They know when to rest. They know when to go. They know who to talk to 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 bring him in and cover for him. Mm-hmm. Well, when you saw this conditioning session going on, what yeah. what were the things um, that you'd have changed? What were they doing, and what would you have been like? You know, what you need to be doing this, this, this. Well, um, so they, they had their players, so they're working on like deadlifts, mm-hmm. but it was like um, I think the weight was something like a 20, 20 kilo deadlift. Like for a, for a Premier League footballer, that's like that ain't good enough. Um, and like you could see, it was easy. Uh, it was a very easy session, um, uh, uh, but it was all in like a, a circuit. But it was very kind of um, low intensity. And it's like, well, you know, if you want them to uh, improve their strength, then you got to get them lifting heavier and give them enough recovery around that but if, you, if you're just doing a bit more of a conditioning lower level circuit like you need to make that more relevant to the sport and that that's what I changed so you know that that's where you do more ball work exercises like um, uh, again like if it's just a, um, a kind of simple kind of uh, like passing drills or, um, or whatever like uh, kind of getting them uh, doing the sort of movements they're doing a game uh, I would make them more position specific so centre halves have a different completely different role and have a completely different um, game physically compared to what a midfielder would have compared to what a winger would have compared to what a centre forward would have mm-hmm. you know so you'd, you'd make it position um, specific yeah. uh, and that's what I'd change um, uh, and yeah like as I said with some of these strength and conditioning exercises you know it's the, the clues in the title it's strength and conditioning like having low level exercises for these guys is just you know you might as well not do it yeah Exactly. I know, that's, I know what you mean. Yeah, that, that's what I say. Like the, the types of exercises they were doing, like everyone will have their reasons. You, you can, like, you can get ten trainers and you'll have ten different workouts, uh, and each one will be um, just as fine as the next one. It's just being able to justify why you're doing it. But uh, in my opinion, having kind of that low level um, strength and conditioning is like you've either got to do one or like either. Strengthen, do your strength and conditioning work and work at a high intensity and have your recovery afterwards or if it's more of a um, kind of lower level uh, conditioning session make it sport specific yeah um, like a 20 kilo deadlift and that I mean, we've got women that are lifting twice as much as that even three times as much as that in our, in our gym and they're 50 plus like it's exactly. like it's not enough like for a Premier League footballer that's not enough. No, boxing and uh, it's just, and they're all very lean because they play 90 minutes football and everyone thinks that's great. But I can tell he was talking to Warren Williams on the podcast before and he was talking about how um, the, the, these guys, uh, a lot of the time, they're just so... I mean, it's, it's boxing. Boxing and football are just behind the times. Um, and a lot of the coaches in, in, in these places aren't the best. They're just the ones they can get for the least money. Uh, and this is what goes on. But for, boxing and football in particular, behind the times, it's like we've done it this way for it forever. Um, this is this is the way we should do it. And we were saying to Roy and to Derek, like, a lot of these coaches, or a lot of these players, sorry, make it despite their, their coaches. Um, 
and, and these programs, their bodies, it's lucky that their bodies are very, very strong and they can hold out. But what we, and it was talking all about also about how inflexible a lot of pro sports people are. A lot of people are hugely inflexible. And this is something I want to go into with, with as well. Like, what is your, I mean, a big thing nowadays, I mean, I, I love yoga for its, for its breathing and the way it uses body and, and just different move. It's, it's another string to the, to the bow, uh, holistically, in terms of just getting the body prepared and um, being able to be in different positions, hold different stretches, etc., poses. But in terms of just like stretching and when you get the recovery sessions of yoga, just holding stretches, um, what, do you, what do you think of these in terms of being able to lengthen muscles um, uh, and ligaments? Are, is it good or is there some damage that could be done there? Well, so I mean, with regards to like, the ligament side of things, like, your ligaments are there to keep um, kind of bone connected to bone. It, it's the muscle activity is the most important bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, like if you're, so let's say you're holding a, a yoga pose, like downward facing dogs are a very common and well known one. Um, you know, and you want to be making sure that the muscles are holding on to that that position. You know, your upper back should be working to help support your arms in that position. Your hamstrings should be uh, engaged. Your hips should be nice and high. Um, uh, you know, and you should feel um, like you're well supported in that position. Um, if uh, if you do, then it's a it's an awesome thing to do. Like I, I'm a big fan of yoga, um, but like any kind of exercise, you can do them exercises badly, and you can do them really well. If you do them really well, it's awesome. Um, and you only have to look at um, people like uh, Ryan Giggs is a good example. Um, Brad Friedel is another one in football. Uh, who both of them were uh, very keen on their yoga. And both of them played beyond 40 years old at, you know, Premier League football. Like it's, um, that's no mean feat in itself. And I'm sure the yoga had a part to play in that. No, of course. I mean, I mean, I know doing it myself. Sometimes I come out of uh, yoga class, not the flow ones, because they're generally you do hold poses and stuff, but it's mainly you're still. It's more of a, uh, a rhythm to it. Whereas going to restorative yoga, I come out sometimes we're doing groin, groin stretches, like um, or groin stretches or um, oh, service stretches etc and the next day cool, my groin it feels like it, it's been it's been abused um, is this is this is this good or is this normal and um, should I feel I mean I don't know if anyone else has it out there probably do listening is this normal is this, is this something that we should be like okay that's, that's absolutely fine or is it something we should be worrying about yeah I mean again you'd have to speak to um, a yoga instructor to understand kind of what their take is in it but my take on this is you know, you're you're looking to lengthen the muscle, but then you're also looking to be able to use that muscle whilst it's lengthened to have it under load. So, if you just try and stretch the muscle um, and not get any kind of control under it, then yeah, you probably are going to get quite sore. But uh, let's say you're doing these groin stretches, for example, um, you can find the stretch, uh, find a gentle stretch, and then make sure you can hold that position and, and hold it under load. If you can do that, then try and progress the stretch further, then try and get it under load again. If you just try and do if you just try and do either too much stretching or either just too much strength work and not worry about the your range of movement, again you you're gonna be less efficient with your movement. Oh yeah. And it's I mean if I Okay. And so I mean this all comes back to as well, it's it's quite a, it's not just, just going and stretching it. It all comes down to the whole perspective of are people hydrated enough right and are they eating the right nutrition as well because if people are eating foods that are full of enzymes um, they're, they're not refined they're not processed they're high in nutrients um, and they're having enough water they're assimilating their food properly their cells are hydrated they're going to be a lot more supple than if they're not correct yeah absolutely absolutely like the the exercise like i mean my speciality is in is in the movement side of things um, and not so much in the nutrition side of things. However, like you know, being well nourished uh, and well hydrated is is vital. Like that's um, you know very kind of very obvious for um, for like someone in the industry that isn't even that well attuned to the nutrition side of things. You know, like I wouldn't consider myself a nutritional expert, but I certainly know enough to see that you need to be well hydrated and you need to be well nourished to get the most out of your body. Right. Yeah. I mean, this A lot. Is- of- I was going to say a lot of people are into their cars. Like you wouldn't put um, kind of rubbish fuel into a, into a, uh, an awesome engine. Like you know that would make a huge difference. Certainly on the F1 circuit, if they just use bog standard fuel or even the wrong fuel for those cars, then cars aren't going 200 miles an hour if that happens. Right, yeah. Certainly not lasting the course if they do. Yeah, exactly. You know? and it's, yeah. it's just like the whole. 
it's just a whole. If my my experience of this saying what Ian does is phenomenal, uh, and but to get the best out, it's going to see someone like Ian. Add add this to to your diet and to your nutrition and, and lifestyle, then your body's going to just uh, take to something like the, the the healing process a lot quicker, or or just the uh, adaptation of what you're doing, right? Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, we we help people um, uh, kind of not just with the kind of getting pain free, but actually with the uh, the fitness side of things as well. Um, and those that kind of take on board our advice with drinking more water, um, you know, eating uh, like a more balanced diet, trying to reduce how much processed food they're having, like real kind of basic advice. Mm-hmm. You know, the results are so much better. People get um, end up moving pain-free a lot quicker or they end up seeing results physically a lot quicker purely because, you know, they're, they're looking after themselves inside and outside. Yep. I mean, you don't realise, just if you're constantly inflamed and so, for example, if you're eating foods that are, um, gluten, wheat, for example, glyphosate, things like that can completely dis- disrupt your digestive tract, um, cause inflammation in the gut, lining in the wall. That then can turn off your abdominal line, your abdominal muscle, especially your transverse abdominals, which means then your back has to put in more effort, etc., etc. And all of a sudden, they've got a back issue that's all linked to their digestive system. Um, so it goes round and round in circles now. So I can hundred percent uh, know where you're coming from there, in and if if I was to say to you. Um, for, for the for the majority of people, or for or if I said to you, tell you what, you've got one, yeah, one thing you'd say to everyone out there to to, to, to do, and make sure they do. Uh, that's going to help them when it comes to staying away from injury, um, or even yeah, go go. Your top one thing, what would it be? Uh, certainly, from uh, from my line of work, it'd be move more. It, it is as simple as as that. Like so many people will. Um, have high stress jobs uh, they're not moving so much and then the first thing they do is they'll come home and sit down again and it's like you just got to get moving and you'll feel so much better when you do start moving um, and you know if you can get the advice um, of, a, of a professional of a, a coach that can that can guide you then you know you're going to be able to help yourself uh, a lot quicker but um, if you can't just start moving more and, um, and see how you go. Is that if I said to you your biggest frustration? Would that would that be it as well? Or what would it be something different? Your biggest frustration you see within this? It's, it's, the biggest frustration is people actually not taking advice. Like they come to you for advice, um, and then they don't follow up with it. Um, you know, and it, I suppose it might actually be interesting uh, to speak to uh, someone who understands. Um, psychology a lot more um i don't know if you if you have or if you've got someone lined up on that side of things but it would be interesting to understand why people would um go to a professional for advice um yet not take it what what's keeping them in pain what's stopping them from making that change to it can be a few things but you know, I'm, I'm gonna get someone in this but in my experience a few things haven't delved into it one um people are like well I've, I've heard something different or I've been told something different from someone else it's like well okay well how, how's that going for you well, where's that going yeah. for you I mean you come to me for a reason right yeah uh, absolutely and two it can be some, sometimes people um, have identified with their injury and their, and, their, and their affliction so much that it's become part of them and they use it for any reason they can't do something like oh, I can't do that I've got this injury or I can't I mean I would, but I've got this, so I can't go and play sport because of this, and and it becomes, it becomes something that, that they hold on to as as a regional excuse that they can use to get out of lots of different things, and it just becomes part of their life. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the big thing, isn't it? The, the goal has to be so much bigger than, um, or so much more appeal. Yeah, than than what they're currently experiencing right now. Like, and you need that reason to, yeah, to come and see us and. You know, if it's not strong enough, then yeah, you probably won't make a change, I guess. Yeah, if your dream is not bigger than your nightmare, then you'll stay in your nightmare. You need to find reasons why people, like, people are like, well, what, should, what, should, what, should, what makes you happy? Like, I don't know. Uh, and it's like, well, until we find that, um, it, it's going to be a struggle. Well, then we say, in your nightmare, what's the thing that frustrates you the most? Okay, we'll get out of that because otherwise, um, yeah, people, and also also to do with, I'm going to do a podcast and it's a little bit myself, all about the reptile, um, mammalian, and um, 
human brain isn't parts of your brain as well and when you're in your human brain you've got lots of thoughts going on what you want to achieve etc but most of the time people are so busy trying to um, trying to um, how do, what, what's the word I'm looking for trying to make sure that their, their reptile and mammalian brains are happy that they never get into their human brain it's a bit of a turn it's like the reptile brain is all about fight flight feeding themselves it's like basically yeah. some mammalian brain is all about your um it's all about your um the hierarchy like one of the worst things you can do is be separated from the group because back in the day the group would um be um your survival if you if you got left from the herd then you be yeah. on your own and you get killed so first of all those two things and most people are so too worried about those two things that they never get to the point of the human brain which is where so that's our youngest brain but it's the point where we can start dreaming and start believing and going forward um, because people so it's a podcast I'm going to do I'm going to go into it myself I'm also going to get someone on it um, who's, a, who's a complete expert on it but a lot of reading around this and it comes back to it um, a lot of the times people are so busy um, and yeah and it's, it's a lot of different reasons for it so that's actually a great thing you, you, you brought up the biggest frustration people don't take advice Ian yeah, I mean, mm. we've kept you for like almost 50 minutes now if I say any last thoughts or anything else you'd like to share with it, with the people um, the floor's yours uh, I suppose the, the, the biggest thing um, I guess uh, like I, I know I mentioned about kind of just encouraging people to move more but um, you know get help get, get, uh, if, you, if you're stuck with somewhere um, just get the help that you need um, you know if you look at things like um, you know if you get a burst um, a burst tap or water rain or something at home and, uh, and your kitchen starts flooding you know you're going to call a plumber out you're going to call someone that can deal with that straight away if your house catches fire you're going to call a fire brigade right just do the same with your with your health and, and fitness find a professional that can help you with what you want and, and take their advice that's kind of all I really want to share, really. Yeah, no, awesome. 100% people people then wonder why. And they, they, they yeah, 100%, I get what you mean. People will always go to the mechanic for their car, etc. But then when it comes down, they try and try things and wonder why it doesn't uh, doesn't work. And then they're left scratching their head. And especially nowadays, when there's so much information out there, it's information overload. Um, they don't know which way to turn. Ian, yeah. it's been um, great having you on. And the guys out there, the if any of you guys around Berkshire, I mean, do you, do you work people online as well, Ian? Uh, yeah, it's, it's something I'm actually trialling at the moment. So it, it's not a service we are uh, currently offering, but it's a service that is, uh, yeah, work in progress. And but, uh, the best the best place to find you if people want to contact you, that would be at www.injuryclinicberkshire.com? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we also have a, our fitness um, website as well. So we've got uh, www.fitnessclinicberkshire.com as well. So... Yeah, check out those two sites and um, you'll be able to get hold of us. And you got your contact information on them, yeah? Both of them, yeah. Perfect. Ian, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, mate. Um, it's, it's been uh, No, no worries. And it's something that we want people to get into because injury prevention um, and, and, I mean, also injury prevention, not just cure, is huge as well. You know, people can start doing things right before um, and hopefully they, they won't need to come back from an injury. Absolutely. Awesome, mate. Thanks for being on the show and I'll speak to you later, Ian. Cheers, buddy. Take care, mate. So, guys, that was episode 31 with Ian Davis. Hope you enjoyed that. We covered a lot again. Always try and get quite a lot covered so you can hit it from all different angles because I know that our audience is wide and varied and a few of you might be thinking different things. So I try to come at it from different angles, whether it be sport, whether it just be people that are inflexible, etc. And we went through a lot there. Screening process, uh, as we said before, yoga, stretching, um, like people that are inactive, people that are overactive, with sitting down a lot, standing up a lot. So we covered a lot. So that's a really good interview. I really hope that you enjoyed it because uh, talking to Ian's a good guy. And as I said before, you can find him at www.injuryclinicberkshire.com. Um, also, guys, I just want to say, any any of you got any issues that you need sorting out, you can head on over to www.reviveyourself.co and you can join our free four day total gut revival course um, that will let you know any health issues you've got that will help you with guys or if you'd like to have a chat with me and a little consult and you'd like to just get to the root of it and start moving forward ASAP then once again head over to www.reviveyourself.co and you can contact me on there or you can send me a message at ryan at reviveyourself.co uh, also guys follow us on Instagram at uh, revive underscore yourself and on Facebook at 
Facebook forward slash Revive Natural Health. Um, let me just check that right with Revive one. I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah, Revive underscore yourself. Um, and also try and find me if you want on my uh, on my personal page on Facebook because I always give out lots of free videos and free information. And if you join our email list as well, you'll get lots of free information there. I always send stuff out. So always try and get as much information out for free as possible because even, even when I do my seminars, I go through gut health and I go through toxic food and and carcinogens and we go for epigenetics and there's people looking at me who I always ask do you know much about this and there's always a lot of blank faces in the crowd so I always try and give a lot out I also I follow us on YouTube as well I forgot to say on our YouTube channel um, in fact I'm just trying to if I try and just find a channel for you um, at the moment if you just type in Revive Yourself with Ryan Martin on YouTube you'll find our channel lots of videos there for you all the interviews are up there as well as a lot of um, free information I give myself so anyway guys that's it for today that's episode 31 I'll see you next week I'll see you on the other side as always keep happy keep healthy and I'll speak to you soon bye bye if you're struggling with gut issues such as gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, heartburn, and want to finally be able to eat the foods you love without the crippling after effects, then don't forget to head over to reviveyourself.co and pick up your free copy of the Healing Health Paradigm today.